Howdy folks, I'm Hawkish Hawthorne, hangarly harvesting hardy hazelnuts. I'm Amber. And here are more hardy hazelnuts for us to harvest, but there aren't any because I ate them all because I was hangry. Now they're gone. Let's get started. Oh, and folks, if this is your first time viewing or you're a new viewer, welcome. This is a show where we lie to you for 20 minutes. I don't think that's true. It's very much true. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for dumping my boyfriend after I overheard what he said about me? On Friday, my boyfriend, a 25-year-old male, and I, a 23-year-old female, attended a mutual friends-themed dinner party. We had a good time, and the night went without any problems. I spent most of the time with my female friends, and my boyfriend was hanging out with his buddies. Towards the end, I went outside to chat with someone, and then I went back in to look for my boyfriend, whom I hadn't seen for a little while. Well, I walked past the guest room, and I immediately heard my boyfriend talking to his best friend. I could tell that they were talking about me, so yes, I stopped, and I listened out of sheer curiosity. Whether you want to debate the ethics of that is up to you. For some context, they've been friends since they were kids, so they talk to each other pretty openly. I started dating my boyfriend last year, and I have known his friend for the same amount of time. His friend was telling my boyfriend that he's lucky to have me, and that I'm a real catch. He even said that I have many admirable qualities, and jokingly asked my boyfriend how he managed to bag me. My boyfriend, in a very serious tone, said that he's the catch in the relationship, and that I'm always trying to please him. He said, with pretty girls, you have to make sure she's insecure. When they're confident, it's not going to work. Then he explained that I don't realize how objectively attractive that I am and due to my raging insecurities about every little detail. I was left speechless and deeply shocked. His friend was quiet and then said, that's messed up. My boyfriend laughed and kept saying that they both knew it was true and to quit virtue signaling. At the end, his friend said that if I'm insecure, I do a great job at hiding it because he views me as a confident person and assertive. My boyfriend laughed and said, nah, bro, she's so insecure, it's crazy. Then he grossly said that intimate time with insecure hot chicks is the best because they'll do anything to please you. I didn't knock on the door. I didn't walk in. Later, we went home and I didn't bring it up. I broke up with him via text the next day and explained why I made that decision. Now my friends think that I'm ridiculous for jumping to decisions so fast. They all say that I hit him with a breakup out of nowhere <laughs> and didn't even give him enough time or a chance to explain himself given the context. I said that his words shattered my heart and no amount of context will salvage this. The only people who don't think that I'm a jerk are my closest female friend and his best friend. They both feel bad for me and said that I did the right thing. So am I the jerk in this situation for doing what I did, or is it justified? All right, folks, what do you think? Is OP justified with breaking up with this individual? Yeah, you're definitely not the jerk here. He admitted to manipulating you so that you'll feel insecure and keep doing everything he wants. He he literally uh, that's literally admitted that he manipulates you. Mm -hmm. You do you should not do not have to stay in a relationship with someone. You don't need to give them time to explain their manipulation. He has shown he is not a trustworthy partner. Yeah. What is, what is there going to explain? So he can tear her down so that exactly. she gets more insecure about breaking up with him or something like that? Yeah, now this is just classic abusive type behavior. Like if you're if you feel that your partner has better options and the only way to keep them is to tear them down, then Maybe you should seek counseling. It's well, not exactly. a good way of approaching relationships. Yeah, and like I understand, like he might have his own insecurities, but like you were saying, he can go to therapy. If you feel like your partner like might leave for better options, then become the best option you can be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's really the thing, right? Like, you know, there are some people with the the philosophy of whoever cares the least is the winner in a relationship, and that is a terrible philosophy, right? And that doesn't help you build a good, strong relationship. It only makes a, you know, has you both struggling for some kind of power dynamic. And do you really want to be in a relationship where you feel like someone's 
attached to you out of obligation as opposed to actually wanting to be there because they want to be there, right? Or they're attached to you because they don't feel like they can do better, right? Right. And this is like a gilded cage that he's trying to put OP into. And I'm glad OP found out about this before, you know, he had a chance to even degrade her more and, you know, be a bad person, right? Yeah, and I mean, I think OP should get some new friends. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm glad that her best friend's still staying with her, and I'm glad that the boyfriend's best friend is sticking up for her, too. Yeah, and suppose for a moment that he isn't actually tearing her down, and that this is just something he said to be kind of like macho or whatever... It still is a really gross sentiment, and mm -hmm. I can understand why OP would think that this is not a good person to be around, right? Because if he's going to sit there and brag about this kind of stuff, then that's going to get around anyways, right? Well, and if he's content, like that easily lying about everything, like how are we going to trust his word? Mm -hmm. Well, let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Danny Caps fan says, there's nothing to explain here, is there? And what context, he likes making you insecure, so you'll stick around. He doesn't love you. If he did, he wouldn't be playing mind games with you. If he loved you, he wouldn't want you to be insecure. And that's what people should say. He doesn't love me. I'm just a trophy to him, not the jerk. I mean, that's a really good point, too, is that if you really love someone, you're not going to abuse them. You're not going to put them down just so they'll stay with you. Yeah. And Complete Freed 855 says there's nothing for him to explain. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for refusing to go back to my parents' house as long as my sister is still living with them? I'm a 19-year-old female and I'm in college. And when the semester finished a couple of weeks ago, I had planned to stay with some friends. But my parents told me that they wanted me to come home so bad and that I should spend some time with my family them and my 15 year old sister. So I went home for summer break. I didn't really want to be there because I feel like my parents spoil my younger sister and I find it so annoying and her attitude can be really annoying. But they're family, you know? It lasted three days when I found out that my sister had put a camera in my room. I was so mad and my sister told me that I was being such a drama queen and that there was nothing wrong with getting some footage of me. She tried to claim that it was no different than home movies. My parents were telling me to calm down while I confronted my sister and they acted like she was a baby who didn't get what she was doing. When she's old enough to know so much better and she's old enough to be taught at the very least. I ended up deleting all the stuff that I found on my sister's laptop and then I went to my friend's place like I had originally planned. My parents thought I was just going to be gone for the night but I told them that I wasn't coming back. They gave me a few more days and then when they realized that I was serious, they told me that I needed to come back home sometime. And in the heat of anger, I'm still feeling, I told them that I won't go back the, to the house as long as my sister still lives with them. What I really should have said and what I do feel is that there is no point for me to go back there anymore and when they value her so much more than me and they don't seem to care about me. Because seriously, Acting like it was no big deal that she did this was so gross. My parents told me that I shouldn't have talked that way about my sister and that I'm throwing a temper tantrum instead of being responsible and responding to this like an adult should. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. I mean, depending on what the sister got footage of, that could even be a crime. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people change in their bedrooms. Like, I, that, I don't know how the parents think that that's okay. So... I would say that this is likely a crime you, no matter what footage the sister got because I believe that in a lot of places if there's the expectation of privacy then recording someone is illegal, right? So I don't think the sister realizes that this is probably criminal and I mean that's going to of course vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and it's not legal advice and I you know don't know the laws of everywhere. But I would say that this is extremely unethical to record somebody without their knowledge, especially in a private place. Right. And so, I mean, I think it's very clear, whatever the sister was using this footage for, it was not for good means. And it is despicable that she would do this. It's despicable that the parents would support this. This is not a safe environment for OP. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they say handle it like an adult, what do they want OP to do? Turn the sister over to the police? Yeah. Maybe that would be the right way to handle this. Now... I'm guessing the sister probably did this for like TikTok videos or mm -hmm. something like that. But again, it shows that she has extraordinarily poor judgment and the parents should have really disciplined her and told her that this isn't okay. You can't record people when they're so in, in private like this.
But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And odd character 6648 says, not the jerk, the sister should not invade privacy. Parents should protect privacy and punish the sister. You have a right to feel uncomfortable and leave. And OP replies, they really do, do need to do something. I mean, who knows what else she's doing? And Salm228 says, your parents are perfectly okay with your sister invading your privacy? No, F that, and think about your contact with your parents. And OP replies, yep, they didn't seem to care about it at all and acted like I was being so unreasonable for being bothered by this. I mean, how would they like it if the sister put a camera in their bedroom? Maybe the sister does have a camera in their bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and soon they'll find out firsthand. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for reporting my wife for bringing me snacks in the hospital? I'm a 32-year-old and I'm male. About two years ago, I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder. To put it simply, I eat compulsively even when I'm not hungry. My BMI is 43, putting me in a class 3 obesity range. Since my diagnosis, I have not improved whatsoever. Therapy and support groups have had a positive effect on my mentality, but even two hours after, I'll be in line at a drive through It has affected my health, my mental health, my finances, and of course my wife. My wife is 37. She has average size and eventually agreed that I may actually need a medical intervention. After a lot of deliberation, we packed up and we temporarily moved states so that I could participate in an inpatient program as part of a research study. Apparently, intervention programs for binge eating disorder can be pretty hit or miss. So this one is a new take on them, being six months instead of the typical 30 to 90 days. I am currently at the end of my first month and everything is going pretty well. I've made a lot of friends in the program as well. At the end of the one month mark, visitations opened up and my wife could now visit me. Obviously, she jumped at the chance and came to visit me two days ago. We headed to my room where she took off her backpack and then pulled out some jalapeno chips and colas, two of my most common binge items. At first, it freaked me out but she explained that I deserved a break and went into detail about how much trouble she went through to smuggle them through. I immediately shouted for a nurse who forcibly removed the products from her hands and then escorted her out of the hospital with a full team. My wife has now been completely banned from the premise and she is furious with me. The nurses and doctors have expressed nothing but gratitude and told me that I, if I had indulged, then I would have instantly been removed from the program. One thing that my wife said that made me think that she had a point was instead of telling her to put the snacks away and take them home, I went for the nuclear option of calling other people. I know that her bringing me snacks was objectively wrong, but was my reaction over the top? All right, folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. I mean, what she did could, would jeopardize OP's health, and so he was just reacting to that in the moment. Sure, he could have fought her and been like, oh, no, no, hide those, take them home, but she knew she wasn't supposed to do this. She had to go to all the trouble to, to smuggle it in, and she still did it. It shows that she doesn't have any understanding of how serious this issue is to Opie's health. Yeah. Now, I mean, it sounds like OP is in a really good place mm -hmm. and in a really supportive environment and is getting the help that they need. And that's what's really important here. And if the wife can't be trusted to not smuggle food in, then she's not a safe person to be around during this time. And it also makes me question what is she doing is she enabling his behavior at home too because she might you know say oh you deserve this or that or whatnot right Right. she doesn't seem to understand that this isn't like a, a diet where you can have a cheat day like this is a serious psychological mm -hmm. disorder and it requires you know uh constant you know attention and vigilance it's not like you can just like flip a switch in your brain and like okay it's cheat day i'm fine okay now we're done mm -hmm. yeah I, I mean i think this is really very problematic what she did i don't think she understands the gravity of doing this and i mean again like op was lucky because if they hadn't reported them then they would have gotten kicked out of this program and then they would have been back at square one right mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm really glad that they were able to have the fortitude to like no i i refuse this and reject their wife's advances in that respect but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and the Northern Sea says, Info, was your wife aware of how strict the program is before she brought the food in? Edit, people are getting really salty at me for this request for clarification. This is an attempt to vindicate what I think is her clearly a bad choice, 
or to look down on what I think was his good choice. It's an attempt to suss out how bad it is, and it's actually really bad. In fact, I think the clarification makes it even worse for her in the posted since it stood out and it shows how she was aware of the severity of the consequences and did the bad thing anyways. And Opiri, of course, replies, yes. And I mean, she knows. I mean, I was thinking that she might have been unaware that he would get kicked out of the program. But if she knew he was going to get kicked out of the program, it makes you wonder if she snuck these in because she is kind of like tired of the program and tired of being, you know, uh, uprooted and whatnot. Maybe she just wants it to end. Yeah, well, it sounds like she doesn't really understand the severity of this. And she may just like... Like, like you were saying, just wanting to be done with and not care about the consequences to him. Mm -hmm. And Synchro Highway says, Not a jerk. I would be a huge jerk if I brought over a drink to somebody in rehab for alcohol abuse. Your wife is a massive one. And Brave Law 5080 says, Wife is an enabler on, and on some level wants OP to stay fat, sick, and addicted. Sabotaging his recovery is low. OP is going to have to choose between his health and his marriage before this is over. And I mean, I hope that isn't the case. I mean, I hope that OP is able to come out of this program stronger and whatnot, but I, I do think that the wife it, does not understand that this isn't like a game, that they can't play around with his mental health like this. Right, I mean, I think she needs some serious like discussions with uh, you know, a counselor who specializes in binge eating disorder who can help mm -hmm. clarify to her exactly what's going on through her husband's head and why he can't have cheat days. Yeah. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I hope you have a beverage of choice because I do right here. And Amber, she has a joke. Kim, welcome back from vacation. How'd you get that bad gash on your forehead? Tim, I bit myself. Kim, don't be ridiculous. How could you bite yourself on the forehead? Tim, I stood on a chair. I think, I think <laughs> Tim has... I think Tim has deeper issues at hand. You know, the way I thought this might play out is like Tim had dentures. That that was what I was thinking too. But biting themselves on the forehead. I mean, I think I think that they're lying here. I think that something happened and Tim isn't telling us the truth. Tim seems like a very shady person. If you end up with a bite on your forehead and all you can come up with an excuse is that you stood on a chair, you've done some terrible things. You've done some terrible things. Tim, you're a bad man. And I have liquor spice. I got attacked by the zombies. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And Tim is slowly turning into a zombie. But he doesn't want to let his friend know because that would ruin the surprise. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Manic Monday, folks. I hope your Monday and your week are off to a great start. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance, and please, have it surprising. Knock, knock. Who's there? Surprise! I'm very surprised now. This is a very surprising event. I can't believe I won the Publisher Clearinghouse oh. event. Oh, no, no, you, you didn't win the Publisher's Clearinghouse event. Oh, who's there then? Oh, your surprise is just immoral, that uh, don't put cameras in people's bedrooms. <laughs> Don't put cameras in people's bedrooms may not be worth a publisher clearing house sweepstakes entry, but it is good advice. Good advice. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. I immediately shouted for a nurse who forcibly removed the products from her hands and then escorted me out of the hospital. Escorted her out of the hospital. Me? That would be a problem. I immediately shouted for a news... <laughs> That's a, uh, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that escalated very quickly.